Hello, it's Bryony Thomas here. Um, I thought I'd come on just do a little video to say um, hello to everyone because I know that everyone's been um, thinking of me and um, it's been quite overwhelming really to see all your messages of support and um, so I wanted to say hello, I'm here, I'm still alive, I'm still with it, I'm still smiling um, and a massive, massive thank you um, for all the support that you've been sending. Um, the uh, just a, a, a kind of business aside uh, crowdfunding is not a business continuity strategy by uh, by any stretch of the imagination um and i kind of feel like as a businesswoman i ought to explain why uh, why i didn't have the relevant insurances um so i've i've always run programs and i've always had a, a decent amount of uh, passive income and uh, through the last year uh, I've switched those off in order to re-strategize and to gain investment and we we're about to set up a new entity so we we're about to set up a whole separate business and there's a whole list of things that we were going to have on there one of which was key person insurance and critical illness um, but we hadn't got that far um, so just to just to say a massive massive thank you um, for everything that you've been doing um, the just giving total has absolutely blown my mind it's nearly at fifteen thousand pounds and that's enough to keep my assistant employed for the next six months which will help me to keep the business on track which means i'll have something to come back to um, it also means that uh, we can give some money to the charities that have been so incredibly helpful um, the Southmead Friends um, for the support they gave me when I was in Southmead, um, the BRI Above and Beyond um, for the support they gave me when I was in BRI, the Macmillan team who've been absolutely amazing um, and I've just booked a two-day course with uh, Penny Braun um, called Living with the Impact of Cancer. It's a two-day residential course and Tom and I are going to do that together um, and we'd be delighted to be able to uh, give them some, some money towards what they're doing. So um, that money has been amazing and thank you so much. Um, I don't think we, our house, could have taken um, £15,000 worth of flowers. <laughs> that would be some florist, wouldn't it? Um, so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a, a crazy old month. What date are we today? You can tell I'm losing track of time. 22nd um so it was the 19th of december when i had my diagnosis um so i wanted to um tell you a few things about pancreatic cancer because uh, it's probably one of those ones that's not very well known the the cancers that um have the highest survival rates are those that are very visible um those that people can see those that people can feel so breast cancer testis, testicular cancer um skin cancer those sorts of ca cancers that are um you know that the, the treatment of those is very successful generally and that's mainly because they're caught early the thing about pancreatic cancer is that it's never caught early um, it's never caught early because it can't be seen and it can't be felt um, it's you know deep in your body um, there's no lump there's nothing visible and it's only actually when it gets quite large that it starts to cause any symptoms at all and so pancreatic cancer is never caught early um, my tumor was 3.3 centimeters and um, the science on you know, anyone who knows me will know that I've read all I've been reading the science I've been reading all the the medical journals etc and um the science varies in terms of how long therefore it might have been there and uh, on one study um they said that might have been up to 11 years on another study it, it uh, ages at about seven and a half years and then there are those who say that it's a, a lot shorter um, than that but obviously they don't know because when they find a tumor they don't leave it there um, so they don't know how long it takes but it's known as a lazy cancer it takes a long time to grow um, and in terms of symptoms I'd say my main symptom has been fatigue and again anyone who knows me will know that I've had a, an issue with fatigue for, for many years now um, and increasingly um, and I've been doing lots to address that and actually I think the stuff that I've been doing to address my fatigue has meant that my recovery has been um, greatly increased um, the doctors are all amazed with the recovery I've been making I'm amazed with the recovery I've been making um, my scar is healing marvelously and every time I look at it I think gosh if my insides are healing as fast as that um, then you know it's almost a miracle to watch really um, and so, so it's 3.3 centimetres, barely any symptoms, only really fatigue. I also was getting increasingly cold. I couldn't get warm. Um, and I had a really bizarre sense of smell. My sense of smell had really changed. 
And then really, um, I was very lucky in where the cancer was in my pancreas, which is that it was up against a bile duct um, that meant that I developed um, symptoms that are visible. So my urine changed colour, um, my, uh, my stools changed colour, I had loss of appetite, and then I developed jaundice. Um, so if you have any of those symptoms, please go immediately to the doctor. Um, I've been reading about people who took their time to go to the doctor, particularly um, when it's, you know, your kind of a bodily functions, people get a bit embarrassed about it. Um, and they think, oh, you know, I've got a bit, I'm just a bit under the weather and they don't go. And there are people, I had a diagnosis in four days um, that many people take months to get. Um, and, you know, that's because I went immediately to the doctor the moment I had a change um, that was unusual for me. Um, and it's been amazing. So uh, what else to say about pancreatic cancer? Um, the survival rates from pancreatic cancer haven't changed, uh, barely changed in 40 years. Um, it's one of the, uh, you know, it's one of the deadliest um, cancers out there. And, um, and it, 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 needs, it needs research. So uh, what I have done and what I'm going to be doing over the next, I've got 10 weeks until I start chemo. They want me to be fighting fit. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm making like a bodybuilder. To, I've lost quite a lot of weight. I've lost over a stone um, in the last month and quite a lot of muscle mass. Um, so I'm going to make like a bodybuilder um, and eat loads of protein. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So in the next 10 weeks, what am I going to be doing? Um, well, the second edition of Warstack Marketing is nearly finished. Uh, in fact, it is finished. Um, it's, it's in production. And I've committed to 20% of royalties um, from the book going to Pancreatic Cancer UK. Um, for uh, in perpetuity uh, so that's one of the uh, we'll be getting that book launched um, uh, on plan um, and it's planned to be released on the 31st of March which is my birthday uh, my 42nd birthday um, and I still plan to do that I probably won't have a big party maybe a breakfast launch because um, I'm much better in the morning so I get quite tired through the day um, so I'm doing really really well it's um, it's a shitter of a disease uh, it's needs uh it needs lots of research um there's some questions as to whether or not it's uh whether or not it's uh, genetic i haven't had that answer yet one of the questions to remain um and so really my focus over the next um two months is to get fit physically fit um and emotionally ready for the chemotherapy i've been approved for the strongest um form of the chemotherapy based on my fitness which um whilst i know it's going to be quite something um, it is also my very, very, very best chance of not developing any secondaries. Um, so um, I'm happy um, that that has been approved. The, um, the care that I've received from the NHS has been absolutely incredible. The speed at which they moved was incredible. The, the surgeon, um, Meg Finch-Jones, um, Margaret Finch-Jones with BRI was absolutely incredible. She came to see me every day that I was in hospital. I know she didn't need to do that. Um, and they, um, my surgery was 12 hours, um, and the tumour had started to wrap itself around my artery, and they managed to remove all of it. Uh, and I understand that, you know, she was really um, pushing to make sure that that happened. She also um, <laughs> has a broken leg. Um, she did 12 hours of surgery um, on a broken leg. Uh, incredible, incredible woman. Um, I'm probably one of the most experienced Whipple surgeons um, in the UK. I couldn't have been more lucky with the care that I've received. Um, so that was it, really. I wanted to say hello. I'm here. I'm still smiling. This is probably the most upset I've been. I've, I, um, well, that's not true. On the night I got my diagnosis, I think I kept the whole ward awake by wailing um, all night. Um, and I have obviously had my, my days of, of screaming and crying. Uh, but generally, I'm, I'm smiling. Um, and I'm feeling hopeful because I think the care that I've received has been incredible. Um, the fact that it was up against my bile duct means that it was caught as early as pancreatic cancer is ever caught, um, which isn't early, but uh, probably about six years in, um, but early enough to have had a successful surgery and that um, chemo should, should get any, any of those last critters that might be lurking around in my body somewhere. So focus is get the book finished. I really want to get that done and out because it is finished. Um, all we're doing is finishing off the uh, production layout. Um, and I will do a launch event of some kind and hopefully you'll all come along. 20% uh, of all royalties going to Pancreatic Cancer UK. Um, 
and uh, yeah, so focus on me to get fit, get ready for chemotherapy and to spend some lovely time with my friends and family. Uh, a massive, massive, massive thank you to anybody who's contributed to the crowdfunding. As I say, that will allow us to give some money to those charities who have been amazing um, and also to keep my assistant employed, um, which should mean that the business is um, still standing um, when I come back to it after my chemotherapy. Uh, so lots of love for me um, I, and a massive, massive thank you and big love. I've been take, I've been very receptive to the love that I've been, uh, uh, that you've all been sending. And I've, been, I've had a little mantra that all love that I'm being sent, I'm taking into my body. Um, and it's been a little mantra of mine. And I, when I can't sleep, that's what I, I lie there and do. I hold, I put my hand on my star and say, all the love I'm being sent, I'm taking into my body. And I know that you've all been sending phenomenal love and I really, really appreciate it. So thank you. And I will update you as I go. Oh.